If you follow crypto news, every day there is something new. If you want to become a blockchain developer, are you supposed to understand every blockchain? There is a smart way of learning blockchain development that does not require you to know everything. And you don't even need to have a technical background. In this video, I'm going to give you a complete step-by-step -step learning plan for blockchain. It will take you a couple of months and at the end, you will be a blockchain developer. If you are new here, I'm Julian and on Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development. Blockchain networks are networks of computer that run what we call a blockchain client. Each blockchain has its own blockchain client. There is one for Ethereum, one for Bitcoin, etc. Blockchain clients are written using low-level programming languages like C, C++, Golang, Rust, etc. To build a blockchain client, you need to know one or several low-level programming languages and you need to know the operating system, networking, file system, etc. This is not for the faint of heart. It doesn't mean you can do it, but this is not exactly what I would call beginner friendly. But there is something very, very important to understand. Building a blockchain client is not what most blockchain developers do. Nope. Most blockchain developers build applications on top of blockchain networks. We have the same distinction on the web. Most web developers build web app on top of web browser, but they don't build web browsers. To make it clear in terms of vocabulary, developers who build blockchain clients do blockchain core development. And developers who build apps on top of blockchain do blockchain app development. But in most cases, in job offers and in most conversation, when people just say blockchain development, they mean blockchain app development. This is what I'm going to focus on for the rest of this video. This is CoinMarketCap. There are more than 9,000 cryptocurrencies listed. If you listen to some popular crypto YouTubers, all of these projects are important, but it's not true. First of all, understand that most people care about the price of crypto, but there isn't always a correlation between the market cap of a cryptocurrency and the underlying technology. There are a lot of projects with a really high market cap that aren't really important. Second thing to understand is that a lot of blockchain projects do not have their own blockchain. Most projects are built inside a blockchain. You can check out Dapp Radar to have an idea of the popularity of different blockchain. Ethereum used to be the top blockchain. Even though it starts to be challenged by other blockchains like Binance Smart Chain, which are more scalable and have lower transaction fees, you need to realize a couple of things. Ethereum will have its own scaling solution in the near future with L2 chain like Polygon and later will have a more robust solution with Ethereum 2.0. A lot of other blockchains like Binance Smart Chain or Tron are based on the technology of Ethereum. Every time there is a blockchain that uses the EVM short for Ethereum Virtual Machine, it means it's based on Ethereum. For all of these clones of Ethereum, the tech stack is exactly the same as for Ethereum, which means if you learn Ethereum, you can also develop on all of these other blockchains. Network effects are the dominant factor in blockchain adoption. After a blockchain reaches a certain size, it becomes almost impossible to challenge it. Network effect works at different levels. Number of developers, users, investors, and for all of these metrics, Ethereum has reached a critical size. So I recommend to focus first on learning Ethereum. You will need to understand a couple of things like the proof of work algorithm, what is the data structure of the Ethereum blockchain, public and private keys and how addresses are generated, how a wallet works, what is a transaction, the two kinds of accounts on Ethereum, and what is a smart contract. The big mistake of many blockchain newbies is to go straight to smart contract programming, even if they don't have any technical background before. Blockchain technology is built on top of web technologies. Before you can start to go more into more technical stuff, you need to have this fundamental knowledge. Web development is huge. You have many languages, frameworks, etc. You don't need to know all of them. In web development, there are two parts, front-end and back-end. For blockchain, we mostly need front-end. For front-end, you need to learn four things. HTML, which is the structure of web pages. CSS for styling. JavaScript, that's what allows you to interact with the blockchain, connect to the wallet, and display data to users. You will also need to learn a front-end framework to easily build a dynamic UI. There are a lot of frameworks, and a lot of them are great, but we need to be efficient. That's why I recommend to focus on React, which is pretty much the standard in the industry. 
What I mentioned so far is considered front-end web development, but we also need to learn some stuff for back-end web development. For the back-end, you need to learn Node.js. Node.js is JavaScript but server-side. What interests us mostly is NPM, the package manager of Node.js. NPM is used to install dependencies and tools for blockchain development. When you build a blockchain app, the most important part is the smart contracts. Smart contracts are small programs that live in the blockchain. Usually they are quite small, a few hundred of line of code to a few thousands, rarely more. These programs are very different from normal programs. Once they are deployed, you cannot change their code. We say that their code is immutable. However, the data is not immutable. You can change it. Contrary to a normal program, it costs money to change the data of a smart contract. And the more complex our code, the more money it costs. So we try to simplify our code in order to lower execution costs. That's called gas optimization. With smart contract, you can move money natively. This is why smart contracts are so powerful. With a normal program, you will have to integrate with a payment service like PayPal or Stripe, but you need to have a permission to do this and you are constrained by the API. With a smart contract, you can write any logic you want for moving the money around. You do what you want. In terms of security, it's almost impossible to hack the core blockchain protocol. That means if a transaction is sent to move money from an address to another one, it's impossible to hack this and change the recipient address. However, it is possible to introduce a bug in the code of a smart contract and have hackers take advantage of this. There are a couple of programming languages for smart contracts, but the most popular one is called Solidity. The syntax of Solidity looks like JavaScript, but it's very misleading because the way it works is very different. It's also much more limited compared to JavaScript, so we avoid to do things that are too complicated. A great way to experiment with Solidity is to use Remix, an online IDE for Solidity. With Remix, you have nothing to install. You just load the website and you can start writing Solidity code and running your smart contract right away. Remix is good to get started, but in real life project, we usually use something a bit more robust like Truffle. Truffle is one of the most popular framework for Solidity smart contracts. It's a command line tool written in Node.js and you can install it very easily with NPM on Windows, Mac and Linux. It comes with a local Ethereum network for development called Ganache. With Ganache, you can deploy your smart contract on a network completely separated from the real network of Ethereum that we call mainnet. On Ganache, you can have infinite fake Ether, which means you can send as many transactions as you want, lose all the money, it doesn't matter at all. There are also so-called public test nets of Ethereum that you can use to deploy your smart contract. They are a little bit more realistic compared to Ganache, but they are also a bit more difficult to use because you don't control the network yourself. It's a public network run by other computers. And if you wanna have some fake Ether for your transaction, you cannot generate it yourself, but you need to use tools called Fawcett. And sometimes these Fawcetts don't work. When you start to use public test nets, you will probably need to use Etherscan, which is a blockchain explorer. With Etherscan, you can verify that a transaction was mined on the blockchain. Another service you will probably use is Infra. Infra is an API that runs Ethereum clients for you. It's not easy to run an Ethereum client, so Infra is very useful when you want to use a public test net or mainnet. The way you send transactions to a public test net or mainnet is a bit different compared to when you just use Ganache locally. There is a bit of a learning curve the first time you do it. Last thing I haven't mentioned is testing. After you deploy a smart contract, you cannot modify its code. So it's very important that you test your smart contract before deployment. And with the Truffle framework, you can test your smart contracts very easily. So as you can see, for a blockchain developer, learning smart contract development is really a big part, but it's not everything. If you just have a smart contract on the blockchain, the only way to interact with it is with the command line. That's why we also need to build a front end to let our users interact with our smart contract. The smart contract plus the front end is what we call a DAP or a decentralized application. The front end can be a mobile app or a web app, but in most cases, this is a web app. The web app of a DAP is 90% like your standard web application with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and optionally, a front-end framework like React. I told you before that you have to know the basics of web development before diving into blockchain development. Well, now you start to understand why. 
In your front end, there will be two challenges specific to the blockchain. First, the integration with the blockchain. For that, we will use a JavaScript library called Web3. And second, the integration with the wallet. In DApps, the user management is decentralized and users store their password themselves. We actually don't use passwords in DApp, but the closest equivalent would be what we call private keys. With private keys, user can sign a transaction, which is a data package that describes an action that a user wants to do with a verifiable signature that proves the user really wanted to do this action. There are many wallets available for Ethereum, but most people use MetaMask. So in your learning path, you start to learn how to integrate MetaMask and later you can learn how to integrate other wallets. Once you know how to write a full decentralized application, including smart contract and front end, you can optionally decide to specialize even more. There are many ways you can specialize in blockchain, but I would recommend two ways. First, you can become a smart contract specialist. That's a great positioning because smart contract code is very critical and there is a shortage of smart contract experts. If you are really good at Solidity, you can earn up to $250,000. To be really good at Solidity, you will need to know in detail the Ethereum virtual machine, also called EVM. You will need to know also gas optimization and security. The other way you can specialize is in DeFi. DeFi or decentralized finance is the main use case for blockchain. The main kind of project in DeFi are decentralized protocols like Uniswap, lending protocols like Compound and automated robo-advisor also called yield aggregators like Yearn Finance. To learn DeFi, there are three steps. First, understand the fundamental concepts in DeFi like the different types of tokens, liquidity pools, staking, liquidation, flash loans, and after, learn the API of a few DeFi projects. There are really a tons of new projects every week, but most of them are just copy-paste of other projects. So it's better to just know a few projects really well instead of many projects, but very superficially. That's why I recommend to just focus on Uniswap and Compound to get started. And after that, you can build your own DeFi project by playing the Money Lego game and combining different building blocks like Liquidity Pool, staking and also building on top of other DeFi project. This is permissionless. You can use any smart contract you want without asking for permission. So now you have a full roadmap to become a blockchain developer in 2021. The next step is to act on this plan. And for this, you can start by learning how blockchain work by watching this video on my channel. I will see you there.